caught me right in the midst of practicing my flute. I haven't played it for years. I found it in a cupboard and the case was all dusty, so I dusted it off and got it out. And you know what I found out? I'm out of practice. I used to be in a band when I was in high school and when I was in grade school. And then we practiced every day so I could play quite well, but I haven't played it since then, and so I'm really out of practice. Good thing for you to remember. If you want to be able to keep doing something well, keep practicing. Do you want me to play the song that I was playing? I'm not very good at it, but you see if you can guess what song it is, okay? Did you know what it is? God is so good. He is good, and I'm glad you're here today because we have lots of people to see and lots of things to do. Make sure you pay real close attention because, as usual, there will be another mystery word today, and certain words that I say will be keywords. And the keywords will come up on this side, and one of the letters in the keyword will have a, a, it'll be a bright color and it'll be bigger, and then it'll come over into one of the spaces in the mystery word. And it looks like today's mystery word has seven spaces. So pay attention. Whoops, there's my bell. Oh, hi, Dennis. Yeah, come on up. That'd be great. My friend Dennis is here. He's a school teacher, and he has his guitar with him, so maybe he'll play us a song. Speaking of his guitar, I better hide my flute because I don't want... Hi, I don't Janice. Want... Oh. I <laughs> heard your music out there. It was wonderful. Mm, well, well, I I'm glad you're here. Well, I'm glad to Have be here. Have a seat. Come and sit down. Thank you. And will you play us a song? Well, I really came to play with you, but I'll play you a song. Okay. Well, that'd be wonderful. Oh, that's beautiful. It's one of my favorite songs, mm. Janice. Jesus Loves Me. That is a wonderful song. How long have you been playing? Oh, I started when I was 10 years old. My father taught me my first chord, C. And you just kept practicing after that? Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot of fun. You must really like music if you, kept, if you kept doing it. I sure do. How about we play together? Well... The song you were sing, uh, playing when I came up here, uh, God is So Good? Yeah, Let's try it's that. a good song, but I haven't played for six years, and I oh, just Oh, come on, it'll be play. beautiful. Well, you if you do, do the introduction, and if I was doing it in the key of C, because I just picked it up by ear, That's and that fine. was an easy one, but you better do the introduction then. Actually, I'm glad you convinced me too. 
It sounded much better when we did it together. You know what? I heard you've got a jungle. Would you show it to me sometime? Should we show it to him? Okay, we will, but on the condition that you'll play us another song. Oh, I've got just the song for really? the jungle. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. It's over that way, and I'll meet you there in just a minute, okay? Great. Thank you. It's been well, fun. thank you. Yeah, this is wonderful. Music is a fun way to share. I thoroughly enjoyed that. You know, the God talks a lot about music and how important it is. And one verse that just came to my mind is found in Psalms 100, and it's verse 2. And it's, it talks about how we should come before the Lord with gladness and with joyful songs. And I know singing that song and playing that song with him just filled me with joy. Why don't you go to the jungle forest and hear the other song he has for you? Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? J-E-S-U-S, -S, yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. I'm just an ordinary person. I walk to school each day. I try to tell my classmates that Jesus is the way. Cause he's the king of the jungle, ooh, ooh. He's the king of the sea, bubble, bubble, bubble. He's the king of the universe, and he's the king of me. I want to go to heaven and live eternally. So put your trust in Jesus and come along with me. Cause he's, he's the, the king, king of the jungle, jungle. Ooh, ooh. He's, he's the, the king, king of the sea. He's the king of the universe, and he's the king of, he's the king of, he's the king of me. Wow, thank you. That was fun. Well, we enjoyed it too. Thank you for sharing it with me. I'd never heard it before. And thank you for sharing your beautiful jungle forest. Well, we'll do it any time, won't we, if you'll come and sing for us again. I'll look forward to it. Okay. Well, let's go see how a library shares, okay? Well, hello, Mrs. Mitchell. Hi, Janice. I'd like you to meet my friends. Hi, welcome to the library. And that's what we're here for. We just want to find out what you can tell us about libraries. Oh, good. I'm glad that you're here. I just have a couple of books that I was going to mm -hmm. put back on the shelf mm -hmm. because somebody brought them mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what happens here. Okay. The books all have little numbers on the back, oh, and those okay. numbers all mean different things, different mm -hmm. subjects. Mm -hmm. Now, this book happens to be about the sea, and this one is about the mountains. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want a book about the sea, you would go to the card catalog or to the computer and look mm -hmm. under S for, yes. S for C mm -hmm. or M for mountains. Mm -hmm. And they would give you a little number, and then you would go to that spot okay, so to look for it. Says 551.4. Right. Okay. So we'd have to look in the 500s. You want to section? go down to the 500s, which oh. is right down here. Okay. Here's the 500 sure. section, and we're going to put these books away right here. Oh, okay. In the 500 section are a lot of nature books mm. about birds, animals, mm -hmm. uh, the sea, the mountains, trees, mm. flowers. What about Anything. astronomy? I love astronomy. Astronomy, too. Mm. So now, is that for every library in the 500 That is section? for every library. Wow. Every library you go into has the same. It is called the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal System. And it comes from, from the Library of Congress. Oh, well, so then it's very organized all it's over. very organized wow, all over. That's great. Do you think kids can like books? Oh, they should love books. Books really? can be your best friends. Oh. And you can learn so many things and spend so many fun hours learning things. And so you, you must like books. I then. love books. Well, that's great. And I what know. about, I've been noticing these kids are all so quiet. Do you have rules here? That is one of the rules at the library is that you must be quiet. Mm -hmm. You don't jump over the tables mm -hmm. and talk and you can whisper softly, mm -hmm. but it's to come and enjoy books so that other people that are here can also enjoy their books. Oh, that's nice. Well, you know what? I think I, I think and, I have and I don't somebody. want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I think I Thank have to you. help him. Okay, Teddy, this book will be due back in two weeks. I have the date stamped there for you. You enjoy it and have a lot of fun with it. I used to read Sam Campbell when I was a kid. What, what's the name of your book, Teddy? The Seven Secrets of Somewhere Lake. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Do you like nature books? Yeah, they're, they're one of my favorite books. Well, great. See you. Okay, bye. So can you explain to me what the system is sure. that you follow? We'll take this book right here. Every book that's in the library mm -hmm. 
has a date due mm -hmm. and a book card. Mm -hmm. What we do is we have them sign their name on here and mm -hmm. we stamp the date that it's due okay. on the card in here. So then I keep the card and they take the book. Right. And then we know who has the book and that's when it's right. due back. And if they forget when it's due, they can look in the front of the book. Exactly. Well, that's great. Well, we've really appreciated you taking the time oh, to tell well, us about this. Oh, I enjoyed this. having you here. Okay, well, we'll see you, and you don't go away, because when we get back, we're having a guessing game in the jungle forest. See you. Hey, kids. If you love all the fun things you get to do with Janice and her friends, you'll flip over this. It's Janice's Activity Book. Loaded with fun, this book teaches scripture through mazes, puzzles, dot-to-dot -dot games, coloring, and more. And the best part is, it's free! Let's take a look inside. The scripture on this page says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's circle the pictures that are the same. That's right, you've got the idea. There are many more fun-filled activities in this book just waiting for you. By the way, did I mention, it's free! To get your very own copy, have your mom or dad write to Janice's Attic Activity Book, Care of 3ABN, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Don't wait. Order yours today. Animals share with us, too. Don't you just love listening to the different sounds that they make? Let's play a guessing game. Do you know what animal that is? It's a lion. Good for you. Let's do another one. A cricket. A tiny little cricket. Good for you. A kitty cat. Good. Here's a harder one. A slimy green frog. Good. Now this one is really hard, so listen carefully. A loon. Very good. Lion roars across the airplanes, the monkey howls and the wolf does the same. The birds sing their songs and the donkeys make a fuss. The animals share what they do with us. The elephants trumpet as loud as they can. The camels bray as they cross the desert sand. The raccoons chatter at the snakes in the dust. The animals share what they do with us. Jan and I have been talking about plants here, and I've been telling her how all plants need water to survive. But Jana, you know like when it rains, does the, does the plant take in the water through the leaves when it lands on the leaves, or how does no. it get, oh, how does it get it then? Through the roots. Oh, up through the roots. Okay, how about if we do an experiment to show that, okay? Okay, okay we'll take some celery, and we'll cut it on a diagonal like that. And then if you could put in one drop of red food coloring into the bottom of that cup. Did you see how we cut it kind of on an angle? Get in, yeah, that's right. You can put one more in probably. And then we'll put in some water. Don't put the lid on just yet in case we need a bit more. How about a, just a little tad more, one more drop. We want to make it pretty red. There we go. Okay, and we'll just go like this. And do you want to put that in the water, please? and it'll have to kind of lean like that, okay. And we'll put that over here. Now, believe it or not, this piece of celery, you'd never believe it, but it almost has something like little straws inside of it. Did you know that? No. And these little straws are going to suck up that red food coloring. And would you like to see what it looks like? Yes. This is what it's going to look like afterwards. Now, do you see right now how it's still bright green? But after it's sat in this red water for a while, its leaves are going to be red like this. But let me show you what it looks like on the inside, okay? Get it over here. And do you want to cut that off, Jana? Yeah. And I'll put this on. Okay. Do you see those little tubes? Yeah. Sure enough, see all those little red dots are the ends of the little straws that are inside the celery that are sucking up the water. Wasn't that interesting? Yes. Now, it doesn't stop there though. The plant also shares the water. 
And what we did earlier is we took a plastic bag, just a regular plastic bag, and we put it around this leaf and then tied it real tight with a twist tie. And then the plant sat in the sun. And now, Jenna, what do you see all inside there? Condensation. Condensation, because the leaf gives off the water. And that's all collecting on that bag. But you know, on big trees, on a hot summer day, a big tree can give off nearly 25 gallons of water. And we don't see it go into the air, but it does. And this is a fun experiment that you can try at home so that you can see how your plants or your trees are giving off water. Did you know that the leaves of a tree are like miniature food factories? They are. They produce all the food that gives the tree the energy to grow. Here's how. They use three ingredients, water, sunshine, and carbon dioxide. Now you know how the water gets up to the leaves. And then the sun shines on the leaves, and the leaves absorb the sun's rays. But where does the carbon dioxide come from? You're right, from the air. The leaves absorb carbon dioxide from the air. And then they mix those three ingredients together, the water, the sunshine, and the carbon dioxide. And they mix them together, and they make sugar. And then that sugar is what gives the tree the energy to grow into a big, strong tree like this one. But at the same time as it's making that sugar, the leaf is also sharing something. It's giving off oxygen for you and for me to breathe. If there was an oxygen in the air, the animals would die and we'd die too. I think the leaf does an important work, don't you? Since we've been talking about sharing, Kimberly and I have decided that it would be fun to make a healthy treat that you can share. Do we want to put a lot of sugar in our bodies, Kimberly? No. No, we sure don't. So this is a treat made with all natural fruit. And first we put in the frozen blueberries. And now, Kimberly, can you put in some dried peaches, please? Sure. Okay, great. How about one more, maybe? Great. Kimberly, why don't you put in a spoonful of raisins, because they have lots of iron in them. Can you get them out? Good. That was good. That's enough. Yep. That's good. Good. Okay. And how about an apricot, too? Apricots are so good for you. Great. Okay. So we've got a little bit of everything. And now plug your ears, because we're going to turn the blender on. Okay, now Kimberly, if you'd like to move those containers off to that side. Thank you, sweetheart. And then we'll move the blender off. Ooh, this looks yummy, doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't that look good? You know, dried fruit and fresh fruit is so fun to work with because it's so pretty. Now, and it's also good for you. Now we can spread these onto the crackers, can't we? And we can just both start spreading. There's a knife for you. And we'll go ahead. Ooh, this looks good. This will be fun to share with somebody, won't it? Yeah. And what, you could, what we can do to make it pretty is we can put... You spread them and then I'll put a blueberry on the top of each one. How would that be? Kimberly, I have an idea. What about if we shared one of these with Bradley, the cameraman? Sure. Okay, let's call him on. Bradley, come on, we want to give you one of these. You get it ready to give to him, okay? Come on, Bradley, we're waiting for you. Don't, he's shy. Oh, there he comes. I wonder who's going to run his camera without him here. Okay, you can give it to him. Thank you. You're welcome. It's fun to share things, isn't it? Yes. And now you have a new friend. That's fun. Did you know that one of the best ways to become a good friend of Jesus is by spending personal time with Him every day? Well, adults do that by praying and by reading their Bibles. But if you can't read, it's kind of hard, isn't it? Or maybe you just like listening to tapes. 
Well, here's a fun way to have your very own devotions every morning when you get up. Janice has made these morning time devotions for her kids and for you, complete with songs, prayers, and stories. For more information, have your parents write to Morning Time Ministries, Box 208A, Kitwanga, that's K I T W A N G A, British Columbia, V0J 2A0, or call 1 800 263 7671. Here's the number again 1 800 263 7671. Have you heard the story about the little boy who shared his lunch with Jesus? He had five little loaves and two fishes, and he shared them. And guess how many people Jesus fed? Five thousand. Jesus stretched his lunch, and do you know what he's promised? He's promised that he'll still stretch things today, and whenever you share, he'll always double your joy. Do it today, double your joy, learn to share, learn to share, every girl. Every boy learn to share, learn to share. Doing the dishes, washing the car, meeting someone new. Sending a letter, giving a smile, there are lots of things to do. Do it today, double your joy, learn to share, learn to share. Every girl, every boy learn to share. How about let's go share a story, okay? Oops. That's better. Are you ready for another story? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what's been happening in Longview Village? All these mysterious things, and they're, they're nice things that are happening, and nobody knows who's done them. And the latest thing is, where we left off, was that the mystic workers actually came to Roy's uncle's store, right? Okay, well, Mr. Wallace, Roy's uncle, he had a pen knife. Now, a pen knife is kind of like a pocket knife. You know, you open it up, and all these different blades and stuff, you can fold them out. And this one was very special to him because it had been given to him by a friend and he really liked it. He'd had it for years and years and it was just kind of a trusty thing that he liked having. Well, he'd lost it and he just felt sick about losing it because he really liked having it. And he had looked everywhere and he couldn't find it. So he was very disappointed. Well, that next morning, would you believe when he woke up and went to his bedroom window and lifted the blind, hanging from a string in his bedroom window was his, his knife. Can you believe it? Of course he didn't know who did it. He was so curious, they just didn't know how it could have happened. Well, they were just barely getting over that when all of a sudden Roy heard the news that they had come to Miss McIntyre's house. Well, Mrs. McIntyre was a very old lady, and she was a widow, and she just, she couldn't keep her house quite as nice as she used to keep it. And she had this table that was really rickety, much, even much more rickety than this. And she had been using it, even though it was almost ready to just fall apart. The legs were really wobbly, and it kind of sagged in the middle. Well, she had been out doing something, and when she came back, she went to put something on her table, and right away she noticed that it didn't wiggle and wobble like it used to wiggle. And so she kind of got down and she looked under her table, and there it was mended. There was a board underneath it, and it was all screwed into place. Well, of course, she was so excited. She went running through the village telling people about it, and of course, Roy heard about it, and of as soon as he heard about it, he ran up there to look at it. And she had just kind of looked under, but he got right under, and he looked really carefully. And that was when he noticed that they had screwed it in. They had screwed the board in, not nailed, because I'm sure that nails would make banging noises, wouldn't it? And then that would alert somebody to what they were doing. But the thing that he really noticed was that there were three holes that were left that didn't have a screw in them.
And so he said to Mrs. McIntyre, he said, did you notice that? He said, I think that either they ran out of screws or somebody came along and it scared them so they couldn't finish their job. And she said, that doesn't make sense. Angels don't leave jobs half undone because she was one of the ones that really thought it must be angels doing all these good deeds. And Roy said, well, Mrs. McIntyre, I think it was people who did it. And he said, in fact, I would like your permission to come to your house tonight and watch. And she said, okay. So he waited till about 10 o'clock that evening when it was nice and dark. And then he went up there and she said, you know, she said, why don't you sit out here in this little shed right out and then you'll see them if they come or if they go. So he thought that was fine. So he had a flashlight with him and he kind of propped himself up between some old boards and buckets and stuff and made himself as comfortable as possible. And then he waited. Well, he waited and he waited and he waited and he waited. He started to get a little bit tired because it was getting kind of darker and darker. And it was getting later and later. And pretty soon it started to get kind of creepy, you know, how it gets kind of dark and eerie. And it was almost getting kind of creaky and scary out. And pretty soon he fell asleep. And then he heard a noise. He was looking everywhere for his flashlight. And he found his flashlight and he flashed it on. And it was Mrs. McIntyre. Here he thought he had caught them and all it was was Mrs. McIntyre. She said, did you see them? And he said, see? What? 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 what did? And she said, I know they were here because she said, I heard noises and I came running out, but they're gone. And he said, well, 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 when did they come? And she said, it couldn't have been that long ago, maybe five or ten minutes. But, you know, I, when, when I heard them, I had to put some clothes on and, before I could come out. And, and, and he said, well, well, do you know which way they went? And she said, I don't know. And he said, I'm going to follow them. And so he went running out of the yard just as fast as he could. And he got down to the end of her driveway, her gate. And he didn't know which way to go. Do you want to know which way he went? Yeah. Next time I'll tell you, okay? Do you remember? Did you catch the mystery word today? Did you remember to watch carefully for it? I think it's a nice word. It's friends. And that's what I like being with you. Sharing is fun. And I've enjoyed sharing with you today. And I just hope that we can even become better friends. See you next time.